church. How are we doing today? Everybody all right? Good to be here with you guys, and it's so good to be here because there's nothing better than to get together with some family, and that's what we are here. We are a church family. Uh, we are united together through the, the Spirit of God, and look, I just want to tell you, if this is your first week here, if you're a visitor, watch out. We're lovable. You're going to like us, okay? You're going to want to hug us and all sorts of stuff. It's okay. We allow hugs here. It's fine, but we are all part of the same family, and we just want you to know that you are welcome here. Make yourself at home. Uh, this place is for you, and we just want to tell you that you belong. You you belong here because we all are a mess. We all have problems. We all need help. We're all human. I mean, come on. We fit together. We belong together. So just enjoy yourself. Uh, I just want to remind you that we've been having some amazing things happening. And uh, if you were here, was, was service last week not good, man? We had a good service last week. Good message. Good worship. But then it was capped off by the end, and we had uh, we celebrated three new baptisms, which is really, really awesome to see those kids and the adults get baptized, right? And so we are witnessing the movement of God going through this church. We get, or month after month, we've been having baptisms and lives restored and people rededicating and new salvations, and it's really good. And God is in the center of all of that. But helping God make that happen is you guys. And so what I want to say is that if you are a tither or a giver to this church, all of this happens because of you. You help to support things. What does that mean? When you tithe and you support this church, we're able to put on programs like VBS and camp where two of those people gave their life to Jesus. And now that they gave their life to Jesus, they're able to take the next step of baptism. And so your support makes a difference in helping lives get restored. And so if you are someone that supports this church financially, we just want to say thank you for your part in that. So give everybody a hand that has a part in that. Uh, if you haven't been giving, jump on board and help us to share the gospel, to touch lives, restore people, because uh, what you do here does matter, and it's changing lives, and God is using it for his good and for his glory. Uh, haven't you been enjoying this series? This series has actually been really good. I've enjoyed it because I need to take some time and just remember how good God is. You know, we get going so fast and life gets so crazy. Sometimes we forget how good God is and how good he is, not just in some times, but in all the times. And he really does that. And how he does that is through four major ways that we're sharing with you. First, he, he restores hope because there's times in our life where we do get down. Life really gets us. Um, I was shared a story of when I went into depression for the first time, and, and in my depression, God met me there, and he restored my hope, and, and he could do that for you as well. Any time that, that life gets you down, our Savior's there to save us and to lift us up and to restore us, because what we need to know is that even if this life is taken from us, if we lose the, the biggest thing that we have, which is life, there is something beyond this life that is great and good, and so there's hope even in death. But here's the good thing is he comes and meets us in life and restores us and renews us. And then he also brings in peace, which is the second way that we learned last week. And he brings in peace that surpasses understanding. What does that mean? In times we should be losing our mind, we don't. In times that we should be losing ourselves in loss and in mourning, we don't. Why? Because he brings in peace and hope and restores us because he is good and he is good in all times. Because he lets us know that he has us in his hands. Do you know even in your worst moments, God has you in his hands? That he's still in control. No matter what it looks like, God is always, always in control. Now this week we're going to be talking about the next thing that God does for us. Which is he showers us and pours his favor out upon us. Maybe you're thinking, well, what's so big about favor? Well, I'm glad you asked. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 22, 1, it says, A good name is to be chosen rather than great riches. What does it mean, a good name? Justin's a good name, right? I like that. You should all be called Justin. Uh, but what it's really saying is your, your character and how you're known. Like, who you are as a person is to be chosen. I want my name to be good. I want when people think about me or, or they introduce themselves that they look at me and they go, hey, that, that's a good person. They have a good reputation and a good character attached to their name. And that's greater than riches, right? We should choose that over riches. But then it goes on to say, favor is better than silver and gold. And so what it's saying is, yeah, we can go through life trying to get rich and gain money and possessions. And, and that may make you happy for a time. But to have good character 
and a good reputation plus the favor of God on your life is better than anything else you can receive on earth. Because his favor is so important to our lives. Now this area that God showers over us is slightly different than the other two because the other two are, are him doing something for us. But when we look at the favor of God, the favor is the goodness of God that is poured into us so that it can be used to what? Bless others and serve God. So there's a little bit of a difference. It doesn't stop here. Uh, some of those other things, it's like, God, you're, you're taking care of me and it's for me and I need this, which is good. God does that for us. But the favor of God is not just for you. He allows your life to be used for others and to serve him. And so when I am receiving the favor of God, it enters into my life. And, and does it bless my life? Absolutely. God blesses. He wants to bless your life. He wants you to have the best life possible. But then we get to take what he has given us and we get to use it to bless others, which is, let me tell you, better have you ever blessed somebody? It feels good. I know Christmas is coming. Y'all better give me a gift, but I'm going to give you one too. You know what I mean? Like I want to receive, of course, but it feels so much better when, when you give. And so what we're saying is there's nothing better that we can do to allow God to use us in a way where not only do we receive, but we get to experience the giving of God as well. And look what it says in Acts 20, 35. It says, I have been a constant example of how you can help those in need by working hard. Why does he add that last part, working hard? Because we don't help others naturally, right? We just live life naturally. We just coast naturally. If we want to help others, we have to put work in. Right? What does that mean? I gotta give up my time. I gotta give up my effort. I gotta stop. If you're like me, I'm task oriented. I'm on the go. Like, don't get in my way. I'll knock you down. You know what I mean? And, and you gotta stop. I gotta remember to stop and see the person in front of me. I gotta think about, well, what do they need over what do I need? And that's work for us. And so you gotta work hard to help others. You should remember the words of our Lord Jesus, right? It is more blessed to give than to receive. You know, when Christmas comes around, uh, my wife is really good. I always tell her every year, don't get me nothing. Don't get me nothing. I don't care about it. Don't get me nothing. But of course she gets me something because if not, I give her the look like, you didn't give me nothing? You know, <laughs> but it's, it's nice, right? You, you enjoy opening it. And it's like, oh, thank you very much. But what you really enjoy is watching the other person open what you got them, right? That's the best part of it, especially once you have a, a, a child and you get to watch your children open up their presents. That's the best part of it. And so what he's saying is, yeah, it's good. Like we want to receive, but give. Allow God to do something in you. And so let's start with the question this morning. What is favor? Because I don't want you just taking everything in your life and going, this is the favor of God. This is the favor of God in my life. That's not, that's not true. And so I just want to give you an example of how you can mistake this, okay? After service... Some of you are going to do what I wish I could do, right? And we're going to leave this place in a real big hurry, and we're going to find the first golden arches you can see. You know what I mean? You're going to roll right up into it, and you're going to go drive through, and you're going to get the, the, the Big Mac or the, the double cheese or whatever. And this is the, the first blessing you could ever receive is when you go up to the window, they don't park you, right? They don't park you in the thing. I hate that. They're like, can you pull forward? I'm like, no, give me my food now. You know, like they, they want to park you. They don't park you. You're like, oh, the Lord is with me. You know what I mean? Like they didn't park me. And then you get your food, and you open it up, and actually dropped an extra fry in there and you're like oh I have the favor of God upon me because I am blessed with extra goodness that's not the favor of God that's blessings okay no just kidding that's just somebody making a mistake in their life all right that's that's someone working too hard and they made a mistake don't take everything and be like oh God is favoring me the favor of God is something that's very very special and it means that you are set apart in a different way right receiving the favor of God, does that mean that I am the favorite of God? No, you are not because that's me, okay? Uh, you, you, you might confuse this as, hey, God is playing favorites. That's not true because he loves everyone equally. We've learned this, right? God loves everyone equally. As a matter of fact, in, in Acts 10, 34, it says, then Peter replied, I see very clearly that God shows what no favoritism. And so the answer is yes, God doesn't show favoritism in the context of this verse. What this verse is talking about when it comes to God's love and to the form of it being expressed through salvation, there is no favoritism. 
Everybody is on the same page. Everybody is equal. Everybody has the same right to God. God offers his love and his salvation equally to everyone. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to do anything. It is there for you. Now, when we talk about favoritism, it is available to everyone. He doesn't hold it back to anybody, but you have to go after it. There's something required on your side to access the favor of God. You can't just sit around and be a Sunday morning Christian and be like, God, just shower me with your favor. It doesn't work quite like that. And so in that verse, yes, he shows no favoritism when it comes to salvation. But there are times that we'll see in the Bible that there's a special favor put upon people to allow them to do things that the other people aren't doing. But what we also notice is that it will always go on beyond them to other people. And so we'll see this in Isaiah 66 too, because this answers the question, how does God determine who he's pouring his favor out upon? Because maybe you're like, I want some favor in my life. Well, let me just show you how you get that. This is Isaiah 66 too. His has not my hand made all things, and so they came to being, right? He, he created everything that exists is because of God, declares the Lord. These are the ones I look on with favor, okay? So he's saying, this is how I choose who I favor. I look upon them with favor. It says, those who are humble and contrite in spirit and who tremble at my word. So let's break that down. Humble. Humble means I don't think I'm the greatest, right? I don't have pride. I don't think it's all about me. I'm humble in spirit knowing that I'm not perfect. I don't have it all together. Try in spirit. That's a weird word. I read this and I'm like, God, just speak in English, okay? Uh, you know, what does that mean? That means I have an understanding, right? I, I understand and accept the fact that I need God. That's what that truly means. I, 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 I know I'm not the end all, know all, and matter of fact, I know that I need God in my life, that I can't do the things he's called me to do unless he's there for me. I have a spirit of knowing that I need him every day, every moment of my life. And the last part is I tremble at his word. Now, that's very unique because every day we're making decisions, we're making choices. And I worry and I fear that sometimes we're not worried enough about this are not obeying his word, that we're grieving him and not going against it, and we just don't care or worry about it, right? It's no big deal if I don't follow what he says, that I can break the commandments and it's just, it's just another day, that I don't tremble at the holiness of what is written in this Bible. And so you're going like, yeah, I shower my favor upon these people, these people that are humble, that understand that they know me, but then still reverence my word and what I say and the truth and they live their life according to it. So our relationship and the way that we live our life is a give to receive type relationship. What does it mean, give to receive? We believe in God, right? And we live for God in the way that he asks us to, and then he comes back and he showers us with his favor as a result of the way that we live our life. As I go to God and I what? I willingly surrender as I obey him. Right? I have to obey him and give my life to him. Why? Because he purchased it for a price. And so I honor him by submission. And then he comes back and he blesses my life in return. Hey, let me just tell you, that sounds like a good deal. It sounds like a good deal that if I do what is right, that I am rewarded with the favor of God in my life. And so now we have to be careful that we don't confuse everything with the favor of God because sometimes we can look at people, right? I look at Quinn, I'm like, mm, Quinn be looking rich, so she must be favored by God. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, maybe she's prosperous, maybe she's healthy, you know, maybe you are too. You see people out in the world and they're like, look how good they're doing. They own these big companies, they have all these millions of dollars. That does not mean that that's the favor of God in their life. There are some people out there that have just made wise decisions and they got rich. But the opposite is also true. You don't look at people and go, oh, they have trials and, and hard times and God must be really mad at them. You know what I mean? The opposite is also true. Not every problem is because you're not favored by God. There's lots of times in the Bible where it will say, hey, this person had the favor of God upon them. And right after it is telling a situation of a hardship. And they're going through a hard time even though they are favored by God. 
And so what we see by this is that they experience something that other people don't experience. They have the confidence. They have hope. They have peace. Why? Because God is with them in the trial. See, what's special about them is they can go into these hard times knowing that when they go through the hard times, they have the confidence to know that God is with them in the moment. And what do they know? They know that because God is with me and he's in the moment with me, even though the time is hard, his will and purpose will always be the outcome. Do you understand that God's will will always happen? It's not like God is trying to be in control of the world. He's in control of the world. And so his will will always come about. And so they can have the confidence going, you know what? I see all the problems. I see the situations. I understand what I'm going through. But I know that God's will will still happen. And because I am with him and he is with me, it's going to be okay. That's what we want in our life. Most of us are just looking for the feeling to be able to say, hey, it's going to be okay. I know right now in the moment it's hard. I know right now I'm, I'm suffering. But I know because of God it's going to be okay. And I want to really just stop and just show how Paul puts this all together because he really breaks it down into one verse. And this is in Romans 8 28 and he says, and we know that in all things God works for the good of those what? Who love him. Not for everybody. Not just universal, automatic, but for those who love him. Well, how do we love God? We love God by our obedience to God, right? By, by understanding his word and doing what he asks us, being in submission and humbleness. I show him my love, and he works all things for the good, who have been what? Called according to his purpose. What is God's purpose for us in this life. We share one universal calling as Christians, and that is to bring all of creation back unto him. He wants to restore his creation. He wants to have the whole world bow and confess that he is Lord of their life. And that's, that's his purpose. That's what he's been doing all this time. And so we see God's goodness really start to show through is as we live lives and we please God with them, He's not just in some of the moments, but he's in all of the moments. Come on, I need God in all the moments of my life. Not just when it's convenient, not just when it's easy, but I need him every day, every moment, in every situation. And he comes through in that way. See, he pours out our favor us in ways that, that make it work out for the good. I, I'm telling you, we're going to experience things. You're going to experience things. The favor of God does not stop bad things from happening in your life. I'm sorry. I wish that was true. I wish that you became a Christian and all your problems just floated away and you never had a problem again. But that's not true. You're going to have some problems. But what he does is he takes everything that is bad, that is hard, that is hurtful, that you've cried over, that you stressed over, and he turns them around for your benefit and for the people around you to be used to help them. What does that mean? If you've had something bad happen in your life and you're going, God, why did you let this happen to me? Like, I've been trying to do everything right, but look at all these things that have happened to me. Why are you letting this happen to me? And you're going to come out of it and one day somebody's going to be put in your pathway. You're going to cross paths and they're going to be going through what you went through. And in that moment, you're going to be able to help them and you're going to be able to share how God blessed you and it brought you out of it. And in that moment, you're going to look back. You'll remember, you're going to look back and you're going to go, I get it, God. I understand now what you were doing. And every hardship that you went through is going to become meaningful and it's going to become a blessing and it's going to be used by God to help others. Yes, I wish all problems went away. But what I can guarantee you is that if you keep believing in God and you keep living life right, he's going to take everything and work it for your good, for his purpose to bring people back to him. And that's what we should want. We should want God to use our lives. If you got to cry over it, you might as well let him use it. You know what I mean? If I got to go through it, make it worth it. Use me to touch your people. Use me to, to further your cause and have purpose. Allow God to use your life for his purpose to show people two things. One, that God is real. He's not some made-up thing. He is real. He is moving. He is doing miracles. And the second part of that is he's bigger than anything you can come against. 
You need to understand and truly believe God is bigger than any circumstance you are going through right now. It may feel huge, but my God is bigger than it. Your God is bigger than anything that you go through, and he is under control of everything. I mean, he, it flows through his hands. If God wants to show off through me and you, let him. Come on, if he wants to show off through my life, then who am I to stop him? No, what a blessing and what an honor it could be that the God that created all the universe wants to work through somebody like me and somebody like you. What a, what a privilege it is to lay down our lives before him and say, have your way. Have your way. And, and when we say that, we think about the good things. But no, have your way in the hard things too. Man, I mean, understand that God's going to use your life in the ways that he sees fit. And if it's something that you want, if, if the favor of God is something that you want in your life, then you have an opportunity. God invites you to seek out his favor and bring it into your life that you can feel his presence moving in every situation. Matter of fact, I can prove it to you. In 2 Kings 13, 4, then Jehoshaphat has uh, sought the favor of the Lord, and the Lord listened to him, for he saw the oppression of Israel how the king of Syria oppressed them. So what was happening down this time? He, he's the king, right? He's appointed, and he basically has a nation coming down upon him, and they are oppressing his people. They're going to take over his people. And he's king, so he's responsible for all the lives. This is a lot of pressure, right? A lot of stress. And here's the thing he doesn't know. I don't know how to win this. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I don't know how to fight this. I don't know how to battle this. I don't know how to overcome this. Has that ever happened? I don't know what to do. And instead of doing whatever, instead of being random, instead of trying to fix it, he does one light bulb thing. And he goes, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ask God. Well, I mean, come on. Come on, Christians. I mean, what an idea, right? To, to first go to God, to allow him to speak into our lives. And he goes before God and he goes, Look, I'm going to seek you. I'm going to seek you to give me the answer. You know what that is? That's, that's humbling yourself. Right? I, I know that I don't know the answer. I know that I don't know how to solve the problem, and I humble myself. Right? I, and then the second part is, I know who does. Right? I know that I need God to come through in this, and then I will do whatever your word says. Sounds like Isaiah to me. And so he goes in, and God what? Gives him the solution to the problem. Not only does God hear him, he sees the problem, and then he gives a solution. I want you to receive that right now. I want you to understand God doesn't just hear you, but he sees you. He sees your problem. He sees what you're going through. He sees your oppression. But the best part about it all is he's going to do something about it. That, that's the best part is he, he's in the moment with me. He hears what I'm saying. He sees what I'm going through. And then he's going to help me through it. And he showers us with his presence. Why? Because we go to him first. Now, maybe this is something that you're saying like, well, I don't understand fully how all this happens in my life. Well, I just want to tell you that if you go after God what, in humbleness and obedience, then God will favor you and supply you with everything that you need in God. And so I want to give you five different ways that you can go after God to allow his favor to have way in all of the situations that you may go through. And I'm going to share some of these and I'll share some of my stories. But look, let me tell you, I'm not special. God can move in your life as you seek after him. It doesn't take some special formula. What it takes is a humble heart. What it takes is an understanding that, that God can do things that you can't do. And then to go after him and allow him to move. So I want to show you five different situations that we find in the Bible where his favor pours out and it changes the way the situation seems to that person, allows us to serve others and serve God. The first way is a unique way. It's when we need wisdom and guidance in what God is calling us to do for a purpose, right? God is going to call you out, and it can be different ways. Not all of it. Do you understand not every calling is to be a pastor or a worship leader or this or that? You know, sometimes it's, it's to be a loving person, to be generous, to, to help others in need. You can be called to be a prayer warrior. I mean, not everything has to involve a church and a stage. Sometimes you're called to share the gospel. Sometimes you're called to different things. But God's going to ask you to do something that you're going to be like, man, I don't know, God. 
I don't, I don't know what to do in this situation, but he's going to put before you an opportunity that you're not sure what you should do or how to do or if you should do. Because some of us sometimes we're just like, I don't even know if that's right, God. I know that they say you're perfect, but you may not be perfect in this situation. You know what I mean? Like maybe you made a mistake here. God can give you wisdom in that situation where we honor him and he pours out his favor over that. And this happened for Moses. And Moses was getting this call to go and, and be in charge of this people. And he has this conversation with, with God. And this is in uh, Exodus 33, 12 through 14. It says, Moses says to the Lord, you have been telling me to lead these people, but you have not let me know whom you'll be sending with me. You have said, I know you by name. He knows Moses. I, I, you know me and I know you. And you have found favor with me. So Moses had favor with God. If you are pleased with me, what? Teach me your way so I may... Know you and continue to find favor with you. Remember that this nation is your people. The Lord replied, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. What's happening in this is God's asking Moses to do something that he don't want to do. He don't want any part of it. And the reason he doesn't want any part of it is because he knows he's not sufficient for the job. I know how that feels. There's lots of times I don't feel sufficient for the job. And he's saying, look, if I'm going to do this, you need to do some things for me. First of all, you need to give me some wisdom. You need to teach me your ways. And you need to go with me. Because if you're not with me, guess what? I ain't doing it. And I understand that completely because I can remember like my times of stepping into this role as pastor I, for like a year. It was a long time. Believe me, it was a long time. I, for a year, I just could not comprehend why God would choose me. Because all I could see in me was my flaws. All I could see was my insufficient abilities. All I could see was every reason why I wouldn't pick me. And I'm looking at God and I'm going like, you made a mistake, man. There's so many other people that would probably be better than me. And, and I just, I had this battle within and it brought up a lot of insecurities and things were going crazy. And I, but I, I didn't know why he would do it. And so what I started doing, and I, I continue to do this to this day, is I tell them, like, God, if, if you ain't with me, I'm just not doing it. So if there's a Sunday, they say, welcome out, Pastor Justin, and I don't come out here. God ain't with me, so I just stayed back there. You know what I mean? Like, it just didn't happen. And, and so what, I, I just like, man, I, I just don't know, right? And I'm like, God, you have to give me wisdom. You're going to have to give me guidance. You're going to have to give me the words to say. You're, and, and David will tell you the same thing. When he was going, he was just, his, his biggest thing was like, I'm going to run out of things to say. I mean, how many things can I teach before I run out? He, he's like, I'm going to run out of the stuff. And his worry was he didn't know enough to continue to keep teaching. We were both wrong, but we had to learn that we were wrong through humbleness, right? We had to be humbled down. And so what I, I started doing is before I walk out here, I just, I just go back there, I finish worship, I go back there, and I go, God, that was great. You were with me in worship, and that was good. I rocked it out. It was cool. But I need you now to help me go out there and give the word. And more than anything, I need you to go with me. Because even if I have all the notes and screens and verses and everything, if, even if I have all that, but if I come out here on my own, I'll still mess up. I'll, I'll still flop. I, I still won't be enough. But if you're with me, if you come with me and you're there in the moment, then I know that I can succeed. And to this day, every, every time I get ready to come out here to, to preach, I still get nervous. And I still go back there and I still pray. I'm like, God, I still need you. I still need you to help me. I, I still need you to be with me because I know that I, I'm not good enough. But with you with me, I can do anything, right? And so I, maybe that's you this morning. What, what is God calling you into? What is he asking you to step towards that you just... Man, God, I just don't, I'm not sure about this. I'm not sure if I should be the one to do this. I, I don't know what I'm supposed to do in these things. Ask him for his favor of his presence. Lord, come on, if you're going to take me through this, you've got to go with me. You've got to give me the, the wisdom and the guidance and help me to have the confidence to step out in what you're calling me to do. Here's the thing, and I believe this with all my heart. If God is calling you to something, he's going to give you what you need if you ask. Why? Because God's not setting you up for failure. He's not entertaining himself with us where he's like, watch this dude fail. 
No, he wants you to succeed. And so if he's really calling you into something, he's going to help you to succeed. And so you just have to think, man, God, how, how can you help me through these things I'm going to do? The second one, and this is, this is one of my favorites, we seek God to receive his favor in the unfair moments of life. Come on, does anybody else throw pity parties? I do. You know what I mean? I mean, this is what I, I, I think sometimes. I'm going to let you into my mind. It's scary. But sometimes I, I get to these places where I'm like, God, come on. Like, where are you at? I'm doing all these things for you. I'm living my life. I'm doing everything you ask. And this is what I get. This is what, what happens. Maybe, maybe you're there and you're like, man, I, I try everything. But what I get in return isn't justified to what I'm doing. Like, I'm reading my Bible, I'm praying, I'm going to church, I'm serving, I'm going. And then you allow these things to happen in my life? Have you ever tried to do everything right, but it only seems like everything goes wrong? And in return, you, you feel like you're receiving unfair treatment for what you are putting out. Well, God can pour out his favor in the moments and prepare you for the plan that he has. Do you know that he's going to use all of your moments for the good of his purpose? Come on, do you, be, do you really believe it? Look, look what happens. Joseph, poor guy, he, he gets a, a vision and a dream from God about what God's gonna do in his life. He's calling him to do something. And he gets really excited and he runs back and he shares it with his family. And you know what they do? Uh-uh, I'm selling you into slavery. You ain't ever going to have me bowing down to you, right? They don't like it. They don't love it. And they sell their own brother into slavery. And they betray their brother. And, and then after that, he goes and he's in the, the, this, this nice Potiphar's house who, who's an official. And he's got a great job. And, he, and he's doing his best to honor in the position that he's in, but then the wife kind of has a crush on him, and she tries to get him to lay with them, and he's like, no, I'm not going to do that to my master. I'm not going to betray him by sleeping with his wife, and he flees, and what does she do? She lies to him and says, this guy tried to, tried to take advantage of me. So what does he do? He ends up in jail. I did the right thing, and I get jail? You know what I mean? Like, I might as well have done the wrong thing if I'm going to jail anyways, you know what I mean? At least there should have been a benefit from this. And so I can just imagine him sitting in here and go, I honor God with my life, and this is where I end up. Come on. Sometimes we feel this way. Let's just be honest. But I, I want to tell you that God takes everything that happens to him, and he uses it for not only his good, but the good of a lot of people. Look what it says in Acts 7, 9 through 10. It says, the patriarchs were jealous of the brother Joseph, and they sold him to be a slave in Egypt, but God was with them. And he rescued him from, what, all his troubles. And God gave him favor before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. God also gave Joseph unusual wisdom so that Pharaoh appointed him governor over all of Egypt and put him in charge of the palace. Come on, nobody wants to go to jail. Nobody wants to be sold into slavery. Nobody wants bad things to happen to them. Of course not. But if they're going to happen... You might as well let God take them and work them for your good and rise you up into places you wouldn't. Joseph wasn't ever thinking I was going to be as high up and right under Pharaoh. He never thought he'd be in charge of Egypt. Those weren't dreams of his. But he honored God even in the hard moments, believing in him that he was going to take it and work it for good. And God rose him up into power to do things, not just for him, but he saved his family. He saved a nation. And he found favor with the most powerful person in the whole world in that time. Come on, God can do that for your life. Even in the hard moments, just, God, whatever this is, teach me the lesson. What do I got to go through? Why is this happening to me? Talk to me about it and then help me to use this for your good and your purpose. The third place that God can pour out his favor is in your uncertainty. I'm guilty. You're probably guilty. We're all guilty. But look, our uncertainty. Have you ever had a time where you heard from God, but you're just like, I'm not really sure about this? Rather, you didn't know if it was really him or he, you knew it was him, and you're just like, nah, I'm not sure about that guy. You know what I mean? Like, you're just uncertain. And let me just tell you what is so amazing about God was he was patient with you. He, he didn't leave you or forsake you. He didn't just go, well, forget you then. I'm moving on. But he, he was patient with you. He was patient in your insecurities that were stopping you, and he, he allowed you to get to the place that you needed to get 
so that you could say yes to him. How many times have I said no to God before I said yes because of me stopping me? How many times has God waited and been patient with me to get to the place where I was willing to be used? Well, here, here comes Gideon, and, and he walks up to Gideon, and he says, look, you're going to be the one. You're going to be the one that, that takes care of this whole battle. You're going to win it, and you're going to be great. You're going to be a mighty warrior. And most of us would be like, yeah, cool, I'm down with mighty warrior. But he's like, not me. I'm the smallest of the smallest of the smallest of the smallest. I'm no one. And he was just like, I'm not even sure this is God. I'm not even sure this is you. And in my mind, if I was God, I'd be like, you know what? You don't want to say yes to me? Well, I'm going to somebody else that would appreciate what I'm trying to give. But God is patient, right? He shows favor. And we see in Judges 6, 16 through 18, it says, The Lord answered, I will be with you, and you will strike down all the Midianites, leaving none alive. Gideon replied, If now I have found favor in your eyes. Give me a sign that it's really you talking to me. Please don't go away till I come back and bring my offering and set it before you. And the Lord said, I will wait for your return. I mean, th there's insecurities, but yet there's times that God's like, hey, I'll, I'll, I'll wait. If you don't know it's me, I'll, I'll wait till you know. I'll, I'll wait till you're ready. The fourth way that God pours out his favor to us is to save us from the consequences that others are suffering from. Now, I know this sounds horrible, but this happens. I'm telling you, God sees us when we live our life right as a light in the darkness, and he will keep us from the suffering that others have suffered. And maybe you've experienced this before where like, especially over the last four or five years, where lots of people around us were just miserable and losing and suffering. And you look at your life and you go, oh, man, I don't know why. But everything's okay. I may not have everything that I want, but I definitely have everything that I need. That he keeps us safe from harm and hard times, and, and he, he lets us prosper when everybody else is not. That's the favor of God over our lives. And this happens in Genesis, all the way in the beginning. This is what it says, The Lord observed the extent of the human wickedness on earth. We're not too far from it, right? And he saw that everything that they thought or imagined was constantly and totally what? Evil. So the Lord was sorry that he had ever made them and put them on earth. I hope that God never looks down on my life and go, man, I'm sorry I did that. I mean, I hope that he sees something. Matter of fact, it says that it broke God's heart the way that they lived. And the Lord said, I will wipe the human race I have created from the face of the earth. Yes, I will destroy every living thing. All the people, all the large animals, the small animals that scurry along the ground, and even the birds of the sky. I'm okay with the birds going away. You know what I mean? That's, that's fine with me. I'm sorry that I ever made them. But here in verse 8 is where it gets awesome. But Noah found favor with the Lord. So here's this, this creation, and all of the creation is every thought and everything they did was evil besides who? One. But who goes on the ark? Noah and his family. Now, I know that one day my life is going to end. I don't want it to end by drowning. That sounds horrible, right? And so he was spared what the rest of creation had to go through, and he was allowed to be on an ark with his family, and they were spared from the suffering that the rest of creation had to go through. Let me tell you right now, the way you live your life does not just help you but it also flows down to your family. Come on, this is what we're talking about. It's not just about you. You live your life and God blesses you and it flows through you to your family. And they were saved from the suffering that everybody else had to go through. What an awesome God we have that, that sometimes he does the things that we can't do for ourselves and keeps us safe and protected. The fifth thing, and this is absolutely, definitely my favorite one says, God pours out his favor on us by what? By using us to bring about his will and purpose here on earth. Even though we are flawed, even though we're not perfect, even though we are in some ways messed up, broken people, in our mess, in our imperfectness, in every way that we are, God still chooses to use us. Come on, God still picks us to bring about his will and his purpose. And if that's not the favor of God, I don't know what is. Look at what happens in Luke. This is 1, 27 through 30. And it says, 
to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel of the Lord went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored, and the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at these words. Yes, I would be too if those were the words, right? And wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Don't be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. Now what's unique about this is what she's going through is not about to be roses, rainbows, and gumdrops, okay? You have to understand, she is unmarried, and she is about to become pregnant. And if you become pregnant while you're unmarried during this time, guess what the penalty is? It's not good job, okay? It's death, all right? And, and so she's told that she is favored, highly favored. And the favored is you're about to be judged, persecuted, looked down upon, and even the person you're pledged to is going to be like, oh, you messed up. You know what I mean? Like, maybe we should, I'm going to try to keep it on the down low, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and go my own way, right? And it takes God keeping them together, right? He, he goes and meets with Joseph and keeps them together, but that's not an easy road. And so sometimes the way that God uses us and, and shows us our highly favoredness is to do things that are hard, but what happens from that she is the mother of the savior of the world come on the road may be hard but you were never ever promised the easy road what you're promised is a purposeful road come on i want god to use my life the way he sees fit i want to be favored but i have to understand in my life of favoredness that there's going to be some hard times but god is going to make a way you know she wasn't put to death if you didn't read the end of the book, you know, I mean, she really wasn't. She has the baby. Everything goes good, you know. I'm telling you, if he's asking you to do something, if he's calling you, if, if, if he's saying, this is what I'm calling you to do, you will be successful. But he'll be patient with you. He'll provide you with wisdom and guidance. He will keep you from suffering as you do right. He will allow you to, to have moments of insecurities, and, and he'll be patient and allow you to get through those. But most of all, he will allow you to have purpose in your life. Come on, I, I want God to use me. He sees you not as what you are, but what you could be. He doesn't see you at your worst. He sees you at your best. How good is God that he would choose somebody like us to do his work? Won't you stand with me this morning? The band's about to come up. And look, all of our, our lives are a little bit different. But here's the one thing. I know that if you are alive today, whether you want to believe it or not, God's calling you to something. There's not a person in here that can just stand up and just go, well, God doesn't want to do anything with me. Yes, he does. You're just not listening right now. You're not in tune with him to hear what he's calling you to do. Or maybe he's already spoken something to you and you're just, you're at the denial phase. Not, no way, God, this... You can't be asking me to do this. You can't be wanting this from me. Or maybe you're in it and you're just going like, God, if this is what it is, I'm not sure this is right. I'm not sure this is what I signed up for. Here, Look, if you've never been in church, let me just help you out real quick. If you serve in church long enough, there's going to be a day that comes around where you're going to be like, I'm not sure this is worth it anymore, right? you're going to get tired, you're going to get worn down, you're going to have something happen, you're going to be like, man, I'm trying to do all these good things, and, and if this is what it's about, then you know, I'm, not, I'm not sure I signed up for this. But let me tell you, if you truly surrender your life to God and say, you know what, God, even in these hard times, even in these, these uncertainties, even in all this, I believe you're in it and you're going to do something with it. And I don't know exactly what may happen, but I know that he will take everything in your life and use it for good and for his purpose. But you have to seek him out and go, okay, God, what is it I'm supposed to do? Is this a situation where I'm supposed to learn? Is this a situation where you're keeping me safe? Is this a situation where you're going to do a miracle? You know, what is it? And the only way that we can know those things is if we seek God out. So what we do at the end of our services is we provide the opportunity for that to happen. Here's the thing. Most of us should be going and saying, God, I need you. I'm not good enough. I can't do it. I need you every moment, every day. But maybe today you're going, things are good. Well, 
you should be going to God in thankfulness that he has kept you when others are suffering or lost or that he used you. Or I mean, I mean, if God chose you, which he has chosen all of us, come on, then I'm thankful for that. But allow God to do things in you that you can't do for yourself and start seeking him out so that it can pour into your life through you to others to bring about his will and his purpose. Come on, let's pray. Lord, we just thank you so much. We thank you that you have blessed us. We thank you that you have chosen us and that you call us your family, Lord. Lord, we know that you have asked us to step out in many different ways and that you're calling all of us to, to something to help bring about your will and your purpose. And we know that it will come about. And so we just want you to continue to allow us to seek you for your favor and allow it to pour out into our lives so that we can, we can be successful. And so we just ask you to continue to give us wisdom and guidance. That you show us what steps to take, what steps not to take, Lord. We ask that you, you have patience with us as we struggle with our insecurities. Lord, we ask that you just continue to preserve us as we go through hard times, as you continue to prepare us for the plan that you have for us in the future, Lord. Lord, we know that you're still developing us. You're still changing us and transforming us into your image and likeness. But we, lo we know that even in these hard moments, even in these times, that you're going to use it for our good and for your purpose, Lord. So, Lord, help us to see what you're doing. Help us to understand your movements, Lord. Help us to, to know that you have chosen us and that your will is perfect in every situation. So, Lord, have your way in our lives. We just thank you for the glorious things that are going to happen, the miracles that are going to work through us, Lord, the people that are going to be touched and the lives that are going to be restored. What a good God you are to use us and to choose us as we are, that you never demanded us to be perfect first, but that you chose us and now are transforming us. We just give you all the glory and all the praise. In your name we pray, amen.